If you've ever had to build a shed or plant a garden, you've probably had to measure out the area using feet, yards, and or inches. And if you've had to determine the distance from one town to the next, then no doubt you've come into contact with the mile. But have you ever really wondered, why the hell does 5,280 feet equal a mile? Well, that's why we're going to find out on this episode of Stuff You Probably Wondered with Captain McMuffin. Let's start out by pointing out that the imperial system, that's the version we Americans used, originated in Great Britain and was created by a various array of kings. This probably explains the seemingly random assortment of measurements used in the imperial system and why the system really only spanned the British Empire for a short time before a lot of the countries in its grasp decided to go with the French metric system, nowadays the standard of the world. The imperial system remains the standard here in the U.S., so it's no wonder people occasionally question their origin. To begin, we have the inch. Little guy, isn't he? The unit of measurement is pretty much the base of all others to come, as it's the smallest of all basic measurements. The word inch, like most words in the English language, was borrowed from the Latin uncia, and it means twelfth part, referencing the foot, which contains twelve inches. However, this was just the Romans' way of measuring things. Edward II decided to Britishize the inch to make it the width of one's thumb, or the length of three barley corns. Makes perfect sense. The foot is probably what people most often use to describe the length of things, and as you could probably guess, it was based off Latin pes, meaning foot. But this idea of the foot was impractical because everyone's feet were different sizes, and Britain used this method for almost a thousand years. The aforementioned stupidity ended in 1844, luckily, as the standard foot was affirmed to equal 12 inches. The yard was another measurement with strange origins. The idea came from an old English word meaning rod or measure, but was supposed to represent the average stride of an average man. Like the foot, however, this varies from person to person. In the early 1100s, Henry I of Britain decided to put his own little twist on the yard because, let's face it, when you're the king, you want it your way. And thus, Hank proclaimed, I decree that the yard shall be the length from the tip of my own nose to the end of my thumb. And it was so. As it turns out, this proclamation of the yard was only within a tenth of an inch of indifference from the one we know and love today. Last, and certainly not least, is the enigmatic mile. Oh yes, the mile. It is easy when creating a system of measurement to compare links to familiar things such as body parts or strides, but how would you measure decidedly longer distances? Originally, the answer in the imperial system lied once again in the Romans. Their mile was derived from the Latin word meal, meaning a thousand, and referring to the t thousand strides it took to traverse said mile. However, when the Roman Empire dispersed from the British Isles, the English found themselves faced with a predicament. Their simplistic and very early methods of measurement did not match up to the Romans' pristine mile. The closest they could come with to a compromise was by applying their furlong, which represented the distance of a team of oxen could plow in one day for some reason. The best they could do was to change the length of the mile from around 5,000 feet to 5,280 feet, which was exactly 8 furlongs. It just goes to show that everything is tentative, even the way you measure plow-toting oxen. So that pretty much covers the basic units of measure for the imperial system. Hopefully those of you who will watch this will learn the metric system because it kicks so much more ass, and is actually useful for something. But if you're still curious about the more obscure units of measure in the imperial system, look no further than these charts. Thanks for watching, and if you have any questions for me to answer in this series, leave it in the comments. Maybe I'll do it in my next video. Are you still there? Okay, one last little bonus thingy. Ever wonder why the pound, the basic unit of measuring weight, is abbreviated as LBS? Simply put, it was once again those crazy Brits mooching off the Romans with their Latin words. LBS is just an abbreviated form of Libra, the word for measuring scales. Just thought you should know.